I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a fan shape vector pattern in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I'm going to show you how you can create a pattern like this in Illustrator and it's going to involve some interesting techniques to get the exact shape that we want and then to create the pattern from it. To start I've created a document which is a thousand points by a thousand points but yours could be any size that you like. I'm going to start with a circle so I'm going to click here and select the ellipse tool. Now I don't want this to be filled so I'm going to turn the fill off but I do want it to have a stroke and the stroke is going to be one of the colors I'm using in my pattern. I'm going to click here once to get started and I'm going to create a circle and it doesn't really matter what size my circle is but for argument's sake I'm going to make mine 400 by 400 and click OK and this is my starting shape. Now it has a stroke around it so I'm going to the appearance panel which you can get to by choosing window appearance and I'm going to increase the stroke here. I'm going to make it really quite wide. So I wanted something like this and I want it to be dashed so I'm going to click on the word stroke to open the stroke panel and I'm going to select here dashed line and then I'm going to set a value for my dashed line. Now I want quite a few dashes here and right now I don't have enough so I'm going to decrease the value for dash. But I'm going to make sure that my dash here, the one that's at the center at the top here, is pretty much dead center because this is going to be part of the shape later on. So I'm looking at this handle here and making sure that this shape here is exactly in position. Now if you find that your dashes are not quite even all the way around it'll be because of this setting here. You can see here's a really thick one and all the rest are thin. Well if I click here then they all become the same size. So once I'm happy with the positioning and the approximate number of dashes that I have I'm just going to click away from this. Now I'm going to choose object and then expand appearance and then object expand and I don't want to expand my fill but I do want to expand my stroke so I'll select and click OK and then I'll click away from my shape. If we have a look in the layers panel we'll see what it is that we have. We have a compound path here inside a group. So I'm going to select here and just drag around the inside using this lasso tool because that allows me to select all these inside pieces, all these inside points. I'm going to choose Object Path Average. Select both and click OK. What I've essentially done here is to create a sunburst shape and that's going to give us the lines that we're going to use for our fan. The next thing we need is a square so I'm going to click here on the tool and I want to select a rectangle. So I'm just going to click out here because I want to create a filled rectangle with no stroke right now so we can see it. I'm going to make this 200 by 200 points. That makes a square and it's a filled square, no stroke. I'm going to select the selection tool and I'm going to rotate this holding the shift key down as I do because I want to rotate it to make a diamond out of it. And now I'm just going to drag it into position. I have my smart guides turned on and that tells me when I have it lined up. So the centers are now exactly lined up and it's in the correct position. And you can see that all these little lines are well within the rectangle shape. We need that to happen as well because now we're going to cut our sunburst shape to the shape of this rectangle here or this square. But I need to make another copy of this square before I do that so that I can keep it safe. So I'm going to click it and choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place. And that gives me a second copy of my square and I'm just going to turn it off because I don't want it to be seen at all. And now I'm going to select everything that is here. 
this sort of diamond shape square shape on top and then my sunburst underneath and I'm going to the Pathfinder to do that I'll choose window and then Pathfinder and there's an option in the Pathfinder for cropping this and this is this option here crop and what crop does is it crops everything to the shape of the topmost selected object which is this diamond shape square shape here so if I just click to crop my shape below is going to be cropped to size and that gives me my fan shape now before I move that I want to just bring back the path that I had above the exact same size path that's in the exact same position and what I'm going to do is to flip its fill and stroke colors so now it has a stroke instead of a fill and I'm just going to increase the stroke to about four points and this is the starting shape for my pattern so I'm going to select both of these and choose object group if I group them together they'll travel together so I'm going to move this now into position I'm going to alt drag on it to drag a second copy of it away and I'm going to line these two up so that they just touch and so that their centers are aligned if I'm not sure that their centers are aligned I'll select both of them I want to select here vertical align center and they haven't moved which tells me that they're perfectly aligned now I'm going to take one of these and alt drag a copy of it away and this is going to be one of my other colored shapes now I have a little palette here so I want to go into this shape here and I want to start selecting the pieces that I want so I'm going to select here and you can see that I've got this filled piece selected so now I'm going to change its color and press orange and I'm going to make sure that I target its outside edge here here's its outside edge I'm going to target the color here and make that the same orange so this is another piece for my pattern I'm just going to drag it into position and it goes into position just here just going to make sure that it's nicely lined up and I'm going to take a duplicate of this so I'm going to hold alt or option as I drag a duplicate away and I'm going to add this just down here making sure that it lines up neatly and I'm going to take this and again make a duplicate alt drag a copy away and now I want to color this the third color so I'm just going to double click on this until I have the pieces selected that I want to recolor and I'm looking here to make sure that I have a fill color that I'm now going to replace click on that color and click on the pink here which is going to be the other color that I'm going to use now I need to target the outside edge to this and again change the color to pink exit isolation mode and now I need two of these so I'm going to alt drag another one away and now I'm going to drag and place these in position the first one is going here just going to make sure that these two have the same center and then I'm going to put this one here using the guides to make sure that it's nicely aligned now this is an unusual pattern piece and it's going to give us a slightly different repeating pattern what we've got is two colors side by side here and then these two are alternating this is the starter pattern piece so I'm going to select over all of these shapes and choose object pattern make and click OK and now we have our pattern piece but you can see that things are not joining up properly let's start with the width value so I'm going to deselect this option here so that width and height are not adjusted at the same time and I'm going to decrease the width here what I'm looking to do is to bring these pattern pieces in so that they line up perfectly and once I've done that it's pretty obvious what the problem is here in the vertical these pieces are lined up over the top of each other and they should be offset 
So let's go and select, for example, brick by row and see what that does. Well, it's not offsetting these pieces at all with a brick offset of one half, but let's go and see if a brick offset of, say, a quarter is going to help us. Well, it does. This brick offset is positioning this piece exactly where it needs to go. It's just that it's too far away. Well, to fix that, we're going to adjust the height down. And by decreasing height, I'm bringing these pattern pieces in so that they line up perfectly. And when I'm happy with this, I'm just going to click here on Done. And that creates my pattern swatch. So now I can move these pieces just out of the way for now. And I'm going to create a rectangle the size of my artboard. Now I could do that by selecting the Rectangle tool, but I have a script that does that for me. If you want to learn more about scripting in Illustrator, look out for my video tutorial on Illustrator scripts. Now I have this rectangular path created and I have just selected it. You'll find your pattern has been automatically added to the swatches palette and here it is. So I'm just going to click to fill my shape with this pattern. Now let's see what it looks like when it's shrunk down in size a little bit. To do that I'll choose Object Transform Scale. Now I don't want to scale the object itself, so I'm going to deselect this selection. I'm going to make sure that Preview is turned on so I can see everything. And I'm just going to decide how big I want my pattern to be. And that looks pretty good. I'll click OK. And you can see that this has given us an interesting pattern piece. The darker red colours are evenly spaced across the row that they're in. But you can see that these pale orange and pale pink ones, there are two of them across the pattern. It's just another way of arranging your tile pieces so that you get an interesting pattern effect. But here you've learned how to cut a shape and you've learned to use a sunburst as a way of achieving a pattern piece that looks something like this. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on this YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.